ราก็จะกลับมาสำรวจเพื่อนบ้านของเราในประชาคมอาเซียนกันต่อนะคะกับท่านวิทยากรจากประเทศฟิลิปปินส์ค่ะในการเสนอรายงานวิจัยเรื่องเด็กฟิลิปปินส์ทุกคนเป็นนักอ่านโอ้โหดิฉันเองเห็นหัวข้อนี้แล้วยังรู้สึกว่าอยากเปลี่ยนเป็นเด็กไทยทุกคนเป็นนักอ่านด้วยนะคะอยากให้มีวันนั้นจริงๆเลยนะคะรู้สึกว่ามันอยากจะทราบเคล็ดลับจากท่านวิทยากรกันนะคะว่าทําอย่างไรถึงจะทําให้เด็กไทยทุกคนเป็นนักอ่านได้เช่นกันค่ะคุณฟลอร์มารีสตาโรมานาครูสจากฟิลิปปินส์บอร์ดออนบุ๊กส์ฟอร์ยังพีเพิลแอนซาอัคลัสซีซีกัดฟาวเดชันประเทศฟิลิปปินส์ก็จะมาแชร์ในเรื่องนี้ให้กับพวกเราได้ฟังกันนะคะกูดาฟต์นุ่นแอมโซพรีเวลจ์ตูบีพาร์ตออฟดิสลิเตอร์ซีคอนเฟอเรนซ์แอสซาวส์เทลลิงด์ออร์แกไนเซอร์สอิสด์ First one in in Asia on reading that I have attended. I'm always excited to be part of a group of book lovers. Yay, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. There's a special power in a room full of book lovers, but I have a major complaint. I do not like. Having scheduled me after lunch, when I teach my classes and I have to do read aloud for them, I never do it after lunch because they all fall asleep. So I want to make sure you stay awake. I'm a very strict teacher. If I see you napping, I'm going to call your attention. Okay, that's a deal. Okay. I'd like to start with a favorite quote of mine. When you give someone a book, you don't just give him paper, ink, and glue. You give him the possibility of a whole new life. Now I wish, as a writer, I had written that, but it's borrowed from a British author. First, I want to start with the bad news, so we get it out of the way before the good news. I'm sure, no thanks to media, you've all heard the dismal news about the Philippines. So I'd like to give you the context within which the initiatives of many groups to promote literacy are set, so that you can better appreciate them. First, the Philippine public school system is often described as overburdened and under-resourced. There just isn't enough money. For our large student population, when classes opened in June this year, there was the usual litany of problems: not enough classrooms, overcrowded classrooms, large class sizes, not enough teachers, poor quality of teachers, not enough textbooks, poor quality of textbooks. Increasing dropout rates and less than ideal classroom settings. So, what's going for us? The good news is that the budget of the Department of Education has increased, but it's only 4.5 billion. But that's 52 percent more than the previous budget. Now, why the dropout rate in first grade? Elementary school in the public schools in the Philippines is free and mandatory, and yet not all children go to school because the parents still have to spend for meals, for transportation, 
um, when they were talking about opening day of school difficulties, you know what some children were saying? They had to wake up early, pack their book bags in plastic because they had to cross a river every day. I admire them for doing that to go to school. Now, from first grade, the enrollment is quite high. But from grades 1 to 2, there's already a large dropout rate because of malnutrition and because of all the attendant problems of poverty. In grade 6, the enrollment declines to 68.38%. Why is that? As they, if they stay in school beyond first, second grade, they encounter a lot of problems in comprehending their lessons. And the marked problems are in reading, of course, math, and science. So the higher they go in the level of schooling, the more difficulties they encounter. Look at the last level of schooling in fourth year. We only have 14% graduating from college. So overall, we can say there's a poor quality at present of learning and teaching. But what has become clear in all these discussions and in all this dismaying discovery, is that reading proficiency is the key to early literary success and eventual success in the higher levels of schooling and even in the work world. But it's strange. We complain about the dropout rate. But keeping the students in school with nobody dropping out will mean an additional 1 to 1.2 million students. We're already crowded as it is with a high dropout rate. So if we keep them in school, our problems of shortages will even worsen. When President Noinoy Aquino assumed the presidency last year, he outlined for his term of office for six years a ten-point agenda, some points of which are very critical to the Philippine educational system. He says, by 2015, Children everywhere in the country should be able to complete a full course of primary schooling or elementary schooling. And by 2016, every child must be a reader by first grade. So that's by the end of the Aquino administration. And the necessary infrastructure for this you have heard this from the other presenters, are libraries, books to read, not textbooks, teachers trained in teaching reading to inculcate the joy, the pleasures of reading. We don't want the drills. We don't want phonics. The title of my presentation is actually borrowed from the Department of Education from the Philippines. They have something called ECARP, the acronym for Every Child a Reader Program. At that time, in 2001, they said that by grade 3, every child must be a successful reader. By the same token, they said by grade four, it should be a zero non-readers goal. But grade three is much too late in the elementary level, especially now, this school year, when we have the mandatory kindergarten program 
as preparation for grade one. Now, why is the kindergarten program significant, the preschool program? It prepares the students for grade one and the more rigorous demands in the other grades. So it should minimize the dropout rate. But what's needed? It seems so ambitious. We need major institutional reforms. We need the accompanying infrastructure. I mentioned it earlier. Better quality of teachers, read, uh, books to read, and libraries. And the teacher te training for effective reading instruction. Right now in the Philippines, I would say there are many existing pockets of excellence. But we don't have a unified program that's mandated and standard. So that is what disappoints us at this point. There are just some provinces with successful literacy program. So we need something that will take a successful program, fine tune it so the entire country will follow it. And when I say entire country, you will understand in a little while why there are challenges in doing that in the Philippines. We're a country of 7,100 islands. And the joke is, when people ask me, how many islands are there? Like Boracay is one of the well-known. Now, when they ask, how many islands are there? We ask, during high tide or low tide? Because during low tide, there are many more islands that surface. So, we have different initiatives from different parts of the country. And the best that the department has at the moment, Department of Education, is a catalog of best reading practices and reading intervention projects from 30 schools. And you know how many schools we have in the Philippines? 35,000 plus schools. So 10 years after, the very catchy, every child a reader slogan has very little to show for it. The achievement scores are nothing to be proud of. But there are two concrete results. We have the Philippine Informal Reading Inventory. Sometimes I think it only adds to the burdens of the already overburdened public school teachers. We always say they're underpaid, overworked. And I bless their sense of humor and their courage in going through with their work. One of you asked me yesterday, don't you have 100 kids in one classroom? I said in the worst situation, we would have that. But 60 would be the average. Can you imagine how difficult that is? So we, and the, and the teachers have not lost their sense of humor. You know what they tell me during teacher training programs? They said, our take-home pay cannot even take us home. So it's so difficult. Now, the reading inventory is a very um, intensive test that the teacher must administer to the student one-on-one, -on -one, really to check, can the child read? At what level is he? What are the words that he has trouble uh, reading? The Department of Education also discovered the New Zealand Reading Recovery Program, which is for, to, to help the grade one low literacy achievers. So they want to catch them at the start of schooling so that they don't have too many difficulties for the rest of the school, their academic life. There is also, it seems, a forgotten directive from the DepEd, Department of Education, that every student should show written or oral evidence of having read 
at least two books a year, one per semester, not a textbook, prior to promotion to the next level. Another challenge to literacy in the Philippines is because of our diverse makeup. We have a problem with the medium of instruction. Look at what President Aquino said last year. He said, and look how demanding it is. Learn English well so you can connect with the rest of the world. That's tough enough. Not even all the teachers speak English fluently. Another requirement, learn Filipino, which is our national language, well enough to connect to your countrymen. I am proud to be a Filipino, but I'm so lousy in my national language. To read in Filipino, I have to read it aloud. It's embarrassing because I think Filipino is such a beautiful language. I write for newspapers and books in a borrowed tongue in English. And it only shows how well we were colonized by the Americans. When I was going to school in a convent school in Manila, run by German sisters, if we spoke English, we had to pay a fine. Can you imagine? So my, my Filipino is probably grade one or grade two. Okay, so learn Filipino well and retain your mother tongue to connect to your heritage. You see, Filipino is the mandated national language. But we have Cebuano, we have Ilongo in different provinces, so they don't want to recognize Filipino as the national language. See how diverse we are. The old bilingual policy was simpler, but it also was such a failure. Because English was supposed to be a medium of instruction. The public school students did not master enough English to understand it, and Filipino was also a medium of instruction in some subjects, but they also did not master it. So we were not a master of either language. Instead of complaining about our, our diversity, I think it's something we should build up on and be proud of. Look at what we are. I already mentioned 7,100 islands. We have 120 languages from those areas. And we have eight major regional languages which are widely spoken. So see how complex the situation is. So for school year, 2011, this school year, the Education Secretary introduced the first universal uh, kindergarten program. And another ambitious move was to make us a K-12 program. Why? To make our graduates globally competitive. And because in the ASEAN region, it's only the Philippines and Myanmar who have a 10-year program. So now we want to go K plus 12 to make us more globally competitive. Parents complain. They say it means two more years of tuition we have to pay. And we said, we're the only country that complains because you're giving the students more education. So we hope that thinking changes. So in that setting, how can you promote the love and habit of reading? There are several initiatives that I'd like to share with you, and I hope you can borrow from. When I listened to our friend from Singapore, I was telling her, you know, after you made your presentation, I wanted to pack 
up and not speak anymore to the group. But I'm not embarrassed or apologetic about what the Philippines is offering now. In fact, I'm rather proud of it. The commitment of the citizens. Okay. The Philippine Board on Books for Young People, or the PBBY, and sa aklat sisikat, that's in Filipino, and it, say, it means books make you cool or books make you sparkle or shine. Both are determined, impassioned with a crusade to make every Filipino child not only learn to read, but love to read. The PBBY takes the lead. It's been 28 years now where we celebrate National Children's Book Day every Tuesday in July. I know that other countries mark their National Children's Book Day in April, which is the birthday of Hans Christian Andersen. We cannot do it then because that's also the birthday of a very well-known poet we have. I think it's Balagtas. I'm not even sure. He wrote in Filipino. So we mark it on the second Tuesday, third Tuesday in July, because that's the day when Jose Rizal... How many of you have heard of Jose Rizal? A few hands. He's our national hero. He's a, he's a genius, and he is uh, not only courageous as a patriot, but a man of letters. Uh, the third Tuesday in July was when he first published our beloved folktale, The Monkey and the Turtle, in a London publication. One of the most exciting trips I took on one of my trips to London was not only to go to the station where Harry Potter boards the train, to go to Hogwarts. Of course, it doesn't exist, but I had to look for it. And beside that was the British Library, where I looked at the original document. It was just so awesome. This is a sample of a poster we have for National Children's Book Day. We invite illustrators to do for us posters that will be distributed to public schools all over the country. Remember, they have bare classrooms, so any kind of visual aid helps them, especially in the rural communities. So we ask the illustrators to make a poster that will make kids interested in reading. For this year, because it's the sesquicentennial of Jose Rizal, that means 150th anniversary, we decided to feature Jose Rizal. Since he's an author, in the, our national language, our slogan was Lolo Pepe or Grandfather Pepe, that, that's his nickname, is a reader. And he is also read, because his books are read. His two novels I have to quickly mention, Noli Me Tangere, which means Touch Me Not, and El Filibusterismo, which means The Reign of Greed, were subversive novels. They were anti-Spanish rule, anti-friars, so because of that, he sparked our love for democracy. We began to fight for our independence, and he was killed in one of our parks. That's why he's our national hero. The other foundation that I'm rather proud of is Sa Aklat Sisikat Foundation. I love the logo because it reflects a book, reflects the colors of our flag, even the rays. The rays of the sun on our flag and in the logo represent the first, is it eight, provinces who revolted against the Spaniards. Remember, we had 300 years of Spanish rule. 
30 years of American rule. But the Spaniards did not teach us Spanish. They felt we were too low class to learn Spanish. So after my parents' generation, we did not know Spanish. But look at the Americans. They only stayed 30 years, and they have totally colonized us. We speak English like we're native speakers. I often say they Coca-Colonized us. They were very good about it. We fell in love with Hollywood and American products. Now, so, sa aklat si sikat, books make you cool, want to build a nation of readers, and how do they do this? The earlier speaker talked about uh, making reading fun. This is a program we, we invented, we devised, to make reading fun among public school children. We have a read-a-thon. As you can tell, it's a reading race for 31 days for grade four children. The major components of the program is a weekend teacher training workshop. The teachers learn now how to implement the readathon. At the end of the 31 days, they have a celebrate reading program where they act out scenes from the story. You might be wondering, but what books are they going to read? This is a very labor-intensive, cost-expensive program. Why? With the training of the teachers, where we give them allowance, everything, so they don't incur any expenses, and we have corporate sponsors. We give them a manual that costs about maybe $10, but it's something that they should be able to, um, to use and to refer to, and we give them a collection of 60 new books, all by Philippine authors. Now, if there are eight grade four classes, sections, we give sets for every classroom, so there's no sharing. How did we arrive at 60? Uh, we feel that if you're going to have a drop everything and read session or you want the kids to do whatever with books, at least each of them will have their own books. No sharing during that time. Now, why is it 31 days and why grade 4? Research has shown that it takes when the repetition of something, of a habit or a practice, 21 to 28 consecutive times for a habit to be formed. Also, grade four is the age when the child begins to read comfortably. Also, the grade level where there's a large dropout rate. So we want to prevent that. We want to arrest that. We have been in existence for 10 years. We're now on our 11th year, and we are so pleased with our program. We are proud to say we've reached 868 public schools, but look, that's only one-fourth of the total. But if we keep saying it's only a drop in the bucket, we're going to be discouraged. So we don't want to think that way. We will do what we can do, never mind what the rest of the world says. We'll just do what we're convinced about. And 24,619 teachers, 1 million students, 181,000 children's books. But this is what's so promising. And you should be impressed because I'm very impressed. And it takes hard, it takes much to impress me. A few months ago, Sa Aklat Sisikat got the results of an independent, professional, respected evaluator. This is from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology 
in the States, in Boston, the Poverty Action Lab. It's named Abdul Latif Jamil because a successful graduate named it after his father. And this Poverty Action Lab, which um, has professionals from MIT, Columbia, in the Department of Education in the U.S., the Poverty Action Lab is hired by philanthropists like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, to check if the money they give for different programs are working. Otherwise, why would they continue to fund it? Of course, we have to beg for funding because you can imagine how expensive this was. It took two years for the study to be completed. Now, going back to our program, when we have the reading readathon program, what makes it fun for the children is each of them gets a reading passport. Now, they're familiar with passports because maybe they're fa they come from fa uh, families where the father or mother work abroad. Now, in the passport, they have it keep a log of the books that they have read. And we don't make it like a book report. Sometimes they can draw because that's the problem with us adults. We want the children to read, but we always want to know, did they understand, did they comprehend? So we said, what's a soft sell, friendly way to address this? So we gave them choices of activities. You can write a letter to the author, you can draw the character, because some fourth graders may not be able to write. And instead of the usual charts or the checklist that the teachers have in the classroom, we have the Ibong Adarna. The Adarna is a mythical Filipino bird. It's supposed to sing so beautifully that you're hypnotized when you hear the song. So we felt it would be a good logo. Now, why is it important for our reading program? For every book that the children read, they get a paper feather and they put it on the mural. So if your school, this is for the entire grade four of one school, if, they, if you see that the feathers are getting thicker, you know what it means. More and more of them are reading. These are teachers during the teacher training who are simulating what they will tell the students to do. This is also during teacher training, where we teach them framework of reading, the theories of reading, just to make sure we are on the same page. Something I have to mention about teacher training. We usually have groups of 100 teachers, but if I'm the facilitator, I'm not going to know if you're listening, if you can understand. So what happens is you are grouped into tables of 10 to 12, and there's another facilitator working with you, just to make sure you know what's happening, okay? We encourage the teachers that with the books that we give them, it is a print-rich environment. We said your children cannot be readers, if they're not exposed to a lot of print. Sometimes the public school teachers say, we don't have books, how can we teach them to read? We tell them, get the milk carton, get the products from potato chips, and tell me what words do you know on that packaging. That's why we're such junk collectors when we have workshops, because we bring all the packaging. Okay, that's the uh, culminating activity when we celebrate reading. Okay, there is the, pro, the study said that our reading program, although short term, helped in cultivating the reading habit. And that makes us so proud. The, the age appropriate books were very good for the children. Vocabulary, reading, in recognition of our training, 
the Asian Development Bank and the Republic of Korea gave us a generous grant to go online so that teachers in other islands of the Philippines will have the same training, even if it's not face-to-face. -face. Another, um, another uh, initiative is this, GAP. This is in English, it stand, the acronym stands for Books, Teacher Training, Feeding, Livelihood, Parenting, Support. Now, what is interesting about this and what gives it a lot of publicity and attracts attention, it is initiated by uh, a presidential sister, Pinky Aquino Abellada. Last year, when her brother assumed the presidency, they said, we will build 100 preschools since it will be required. And guess what? By... Uh, after a year, they had 100 preschools, and now they plan to do 150 in the next year. You may look at this and say, hey, but that's a regular classroom, not in the Philippines. Look at the, the, reg, the regular classrooms. These are the ones, they take the existing miserable-looking buildings, they get a sponsor, and pretty it up so it looks like this more color, more resources, there's teacher training. Another one is you're familiar with corporate sponsors. McDonald's has a program for grade one. For them, grade one is a critical grade. They've provided them with big books, workbooks, lesson plans for teachers. Now, these programs are not outside the department because if you do it as something extra, it will not flourish. The teachers will only obey what the Department of Education says. So you have to be recognized by the Department of Education. Uh, Aklasi Sikat is a partner recognized by the department. So is McDonald's. Okay, so they want to develop the love for reading and the usual reading skills. See, look at the attractive books. Now, the Union Bank has another program for grade two, and they have won an award because their program provides every second grade child with a workbook and activity book. They put in the Millennium Development Goals of the United Nations about citizenship. They want the Filipino child to take pride in being Filipino. And they support the Every Child Reader program. Those are their textbooks. A DepEd director and official said, for the first time in the history of Philippine educational system, now there is a book for every child. Can you imagine that? These are some pictures. The awards, it's won. It had a study, but from a local group in the Philippines. This, I think, is very important. Reading is a survival skill. If you cannot read, you cannot learn. If you cannot learn, you cannot survive. Okay, so you can see we have programs for kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade four. I wish every grade level would be adopted from K to 12. So we felt that there are no public libraries in the Philippines. If we want the child to be a reader, we have to provide the books, but there are 37,000 public elementary school libraries um, we would need 37,000 for all the public schools. So we, the Department of Education thought of a library hub. What are these? These are warehouse type libraries, housing books in a centrally located um, location. And these are books 
These are collections that the schools can check out for a month. It services a division. So a hub can service about 10 schools. Usually local government provides the building. A sponsor makes the building pretty and attractive. So we have 117 school divisions who now, um, who now have library hubs. Uh, south of Manila, a school has a book mobile program. This is a real book, uh, a book mobile where the children check out books. While the others are checking out books, the others are doing tutorials with the other volunteers. The National Book Development Board, the government agency, is also very active. It has Buklatan Sabayan. Buklat, book, you know, Buklatan means open, opening a book. So they have a lot of uh, activities, including the National Book Awards, which is now on its 30th year. They also have a book magazine where they put celebrities on the cover. The newspaper, the Inquirer, which is the largest broadsheet for which I write book reviews and education commentaries, thought of a reading session for children, which is now so successful. It's held twice a year, and you can adapt this easily. Invite a celebrity or somebody in the news to read a story, and then there's another, it's just one hour. You have a trained storyteller and another one usually a child storyteller. What is the message? Reading is fun, reading is cool, reading is in. We have our book fair every September. Who says Filipinos don't read books? They buy books, and it's now on its 32nd year. The, ma the newspapers have book review sections every week. Now, I think we should also pay attention to Philippine publishers. They continue to publish quality books despite the competition from American publishers. It's almost an act of courage to be publishing books in the Philippines today. Uh, not including textbooks, in 2009, 5,900 books. And children's titles last year were only 100. We also have children's awards that we started. The first time we had it, they could only choose six books. They were allowed to choose ten but out of 120, they felt only six were good enough. So this is what a leading publisher says. As long as we make books that get children to read, this is very good for the habit of reading. And book reading is a virtue up unto itself, and we hope to turn it into a lifelong dependency or addiction, because regrettably, book readers are endangered today. I must also make mention of promising illustrators and writers. This particular talented writer is an architect by profession. He has won awards for his imaginative book. This is Hide and Seek of Animals and Insects. But you know what sells more? He has these fold-the-bot books. So everybody crazy about robots and how to assemble them cannot help but buy the books and read carefully for the instructions. Now, every Filipino child a reader, it doesn't seem like an elusive dream. And even if we think it's a dream, if we do not dream what will happen to us, it's still important. We're not discouraged. 
we will continue to do what we're doing to make every Filipino child a reader. Now, we know it will, the Department of Education cannot do it alone. It's a very Herculean effort. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of resources, a lot of love, but we all can do it together because really teaching a child to read is like watching a flower bloom. And I know it will happen, it only takes time, and I will not lose hope. Thank you.